Hello and welcome to another Modswell video. I'm your host Maxwell. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Gothic load order. I'm finally happy with where the order is at and it's been testing really well. So well in fact that I decided to increase the mod count up to 150 because of a few subscriber requests for that. A lot of these mods are personal choices or things that I really like to have. So there's definitely going to be some room for you to put your own spin on what I have made. Whilst the order is rolling along, I'm going to be talking about a few of the choices that I've made in this order and a few settings that you'll need to use to get a similar look. So let's get this going. I'm going to start with my weathers. Here I wanted to create a really deep set of weathers that look great in every scenario. I also wanted them to be really dramatic and properly show off the sun, rain, fog and snow. Each weather had to feel special and memorable, so I ended up putting together quite a big setup. For the base, I'm using the bleak version of ELFX Revised as it has one of my favourite colour palettes and brilliant weather effects. ELFX Weathers has always looked epic. It's a vastly underrated mod, but now we have two new revised versions. One has arguably some of the nicest sunny days and the other still has outstanding sun effects but focuses on the bleaker side of things. This is naturally perfect for what I'm building and it has such a reasonable cost. But I am about to raise that by throwing even more mods at the build. First of all, I added on both the Supreme Rainstorms and Blizzards that were recently ported over by Substill. These were designed to not only look awesome, but also somewhat obscure your view, which really adds a ton of drama, especially when you're being ambushed. On top of these, I'm also using Vivid Clouds and Fogs, as one, these new textures look fantastic and blend really nicely with the weathers, and two, the fogs play into some nice situations, again obscuring view and leaving you with that ominous feel. Expect things to pop out of the shadows and the thick fogs to surprise you. This is a lot of mods to throw out weather, I'm aware of this. It's also changed a cost effective mod like ELFX into a fairly high cost mod, but honestly it's really worthwhile. If you wanted to cut down on mod slots, you could change to something like Cathedral and use its somber setting. This would look fantastic and remove the need for several of these mods. However, it won't be as variable across the map. There is somewhat a method to my madness here. Let's move on to lighting. Here I did just go for the big boy file, Enhanced Lights and FX. I've also thrown the enhancer at this just to keep things that little bit spooky and dark in the dungeons. You could drop that and go lighter or even use the hardcore add-on to go even darker still which would definitely suit this order. I usually save space on this and use simply darker interiors slash inferno fire effects light alongside shadows. Whilst this looks great, I didn't find it quite dark enough but for anyone after a cheap flicker free setup this would definitely be the way to go. It will also suit anyone who just isn't into dark dungeons. The final thing, helping out my lighting and my weather too, is display enhancements. For this setup, I advise going with my dark fantasy setup, which is simply presets 3, 9 and 10. You can throw on 28 for a lot blur if you so choose. Alongside this, change the contrast up two stages and play around with saturation, lowering or raising it to your tastes. Personally, I raised it by 1. It's also worth raising all HDR settings by 1 other than sky scale, which you should just leave alone to be honest. You can also add one or two stages of blue filter to make the place feel colder, but I haven't actually done this this time and I'm still happy with how things looked. I figured it kind of already looked cold enough. Moving on, I'll briefly talk about my flora setup. Originally, I was going to use through the looking glass, which I still think is one of the prettier overall setups. However, it does suffer from some trees not being attached to the ground, so I'm hoping that gets fixed soon enough. Instead, I opted to use David's trees and found these looked really nice for such a cheap cost. I'm also replacing the Aspens in the Rift with Aspens Ablaze. And honestly, this could well be the best performance mod in that area with only the likes of Valhalla Rift even coming close. I'm finally getting a solid set of frames through Riften and outside of it, and this all happened when I installed this mod. It's worth noting, this is the first time I have felt free enough to edit this area and even in this fairly heavy order, I am not having a single issue here. Let's get back on track and talk about an aspect that can make or break a gothic order. The architecture. And when I think of gothic architecture, I think of things like large spires, gargoyles, cathedrals and castles. And the best route to see things like this in your game come from the great cities and towns mods. When you look at places like Falkreath for example, you'll see all of those exact elements. The same can be said for Dragon's Bridge, which initially is a small settlement, but with this installed becomes a full medieval style castle. I was definitely borrowing from games like Dark Souls whilst creating this order, and the great cities really helped me achieve that look. 
The Great Cities mods suit most order styles, but none more so than Dark Fantasy, Gothic or Medieval. It totally transforms everything into that style. And what's great is there are files for just about every settlement in the game. And where there wasn't, I just chose to go a different route. For example, Rift and I have edited using Fortified Rift and by Stone Spiral Gaming, which you can find in the Work in Progress section. I'm also using Rift and Docks, which adds so much more to that area. These two synergize fantastically to create a more epic looking Riften with large medieval style walls and defences. In a similar vein, I've chosen to use two mods in Whiterun, Dark's Market with Riverside Expansion. This setup makes it seem as if there's more life in the area as well as creates a kind of old school separation between the rich and the poor. And whilst Morthal does actually have a Great Cities mod, I couldn't help but opt for Clef J's Morthal, which is a wholesale change up designed like a medieval city. This adds in spires and thatchwork housing, as well as fully redoing interiors, which really helps to establish the themes of this order. And of course, to make all of this look better, I had to choose a texture mod as a topper. I happen to be using Tamriel Retextured Architecture. I chose this for a few reasons. It is performance and cost effective, but looks fantastic. The dilapidated appearance of the walls and the wooden beams, the moss across the walls, everything about it truly suits what I'm trying to build here. It blends in so perfectly with the styles of the city edits I chose, as well as the weather and lighting. I couldn't see myself playing with anything else in this setup, however if you choose to, please do send me pictures over on Discord, it would be interesting to see those. I continued these medieval themes when it came to the gear. I chose to use Voltman 30's weapon replacers, which currently has one missing texture, but for its cost and appearance I actually chose to just ignore this. Alongside V30, I'm using a collection of Nordboy UA's mods to retexture the armors, with New Haven clothing overhaul sorting out, well, the clothing. But honestly, reforging to the masses and fashions of the fourth era are really stealing the show here. And they're pairing really nicely with Owl to add such variance and balance to the leveled list, both in terms of loot and combat. Every single chest or spawn seems to have something new and different. This is going to be my setup for a while I should think. Speaking of leveled list, I've ensured there is something new to fight everywhere. This took a few mods to achieve. The first is one of my all time favourites, more bandit camps. But the king of this setup is simply put, Desolate Morning. This mod adds everything you could possibly need to make this style of order. Creepy world edits, new enemy types like zombies, it fills out dungeons and even changes the music to be creepier. Honestly, there is just so much going on here. It makes the night so dangerous to wander around in, that you're really going to have to play it smart. Just roaming around, you'll find entirely new dungeons, such as forts that have demonic evil bosses inside just waiting to pounce. These come fully integrated with map markers, so for those of you curious, they are quite easy to find. Just make sure to go in prepared, because they are not easy fights. These are actual, proper bosses. And, of course, as per usual, I'm using Growl, which adds even more night spawns in the form of werebeasts. This pairs so nicely with the night encounters feature in Desolate Morning to really add so much danger to the dark. I'd say this has quickly become one of my favourite orders for just out and out fun. It looks and performs great, but it's when I just roam around I really get a sense of how long I could play this setup for. And what's great is I haven't really pushed the console that hard. You'd be able to replace some of my choices for heavier versions before even finding that tipping point. I'd actually be really interested in making a few changes to accommodate something like the people of Skyrim which I know would look amazing in this kind of order. I also think even more spawn additions using the like of Splendor could make for a really deadly but fun game. However, I think I've balanced this order to be approachable for all types of players and that's always really my goal, which I hope I have met. I did have a lot of fun making this build, but it was also quite difficult due to the limitations of the engine as well as what was been available. I definitely got very lucky with some mods showing up right as I needed them and really adding to that gothic style that I wanted to build. I hope that more is released in the future so that I can keep developing on this order, and it probably will be one that I build from too, as it's just steps away from games like Bloodborne or Dark Souls, or even a little in the other direction it could be turned into Witcher. But on that I am going to call it. I would really be interested in seeing what people make of this order, so please don't hesitate to share the changes or spins that you use to make it your own. You can usually reach me in the comments section here, or better yet, over on the Discord server. You will find a link to that in the description below. You will also find my entire order, how I have it in my version of the logical load order, either there or as a pinned comment depending on how many characters it takes up. 
If this has helped or you enjoyed the order, I would really appreciate those likes, comments and subscriptions. They help push my content out further with YouTube's algorithm and they also let me know that you want to see more content like this. Either way, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.